It was approaching half past three on Christmas morning 1954 as the Boeing Stratocruiser G Alsa, owned and operated by BOAC, the British Overseas Airways Corporation, neared Prestwick, a scheduled stop on its way to New York, having departed from London. On board the aircraft were Captain William L. Stewart, 10 further crew members and 25 passengers. Their departure from London had been delayed by four hours due to an issue with the landing gear, which resulted in a return to Heathrow to have the problem rectified. Captain Stewart had already been on call for many hours, but agreed to take the flight north to Prestwick, once passengers had been transferred to the new plane, g -Alsa. The Stratocruiser eventually departed at 1.05am. The flight was uneventful, and approaching Presswick, Stuart was instructed to land on runway 31, which necessitated an approach from the southeast. A short distance ahead was a Lockheed Constellation, which landed successfully. As Captain Stuart began his final approach, it was noted that the plane was a little high, but other than that, everything appeared routine to both those on board and onlookers at the airport awaiting the return of loved ones for Christmas. At 3.25am, the Stratocruiser was just 400 yards from the runway, but came down over 100 feet short of the threshold. Damaged, it continued onto the runway before lifting off again for 400 feet and crashing back down, eventually coming to rest on the grass verge beside the runway. The damage was extensive. The cockpit had been detached and thrown clear, which saved its occupants. In the fuselage a fire had started and many passengers were trapped. One of the crew thrown clear was the navigating officer, John Goddard. He tried to gain access to the fuselage where his wife and child had been travelling, but they both died in the flames. Stewardess Margaret Coogan was rescued from the wreckage by a fireman. Unfortunately, she would later die from her injuries, one of four crew members to perish. The only passenger to survive the crash was 41-year-old Henry Russell from Essex. He later gave an account of his experience. I felt the plane had made a very bad landing. I was thrown forward and to the left though my safety belt was still attached. I saw the strip lighting break away from the roof of the cabin. The plane caught fire in front. I have no recollection of the next few moments. I heard a lot of noise. When the plane became stationary, I was still strapped in my seat in an upright position. I unstrapped myself and turned towards the rear of the plane because of the flames in front. I walked towards the rear but could not get out. The gangway was blocked completely and I couldn't get through. I walked back and saw a hole in the roof and I tried to climb through. I fell back once but the second time got up and managed to get through and drop on the wing, then to the ground. The metal was quite hot. After a stay in air hospital with severe burns, Mr Russell eventually recovered. The report into the accident found that the captain began his descent too late and at too steep an angle. Flare out, the act of lifting the nose of an aircraft just prior to touching down to ensure a soft and controlled landing, came too late, resulting in the first heavy impact with the ground. This appears to be a fairly damning indictment of the crew who were solely blamed for the crash and taken off flight duties, but other factors should be taken into consideration. They were undoubtedly weary after working over their normal hours. On that evening, the runway lights at Prestwick were out of action which made judging the approach considerably trickier, particularly with the low cloud in the area and driving rain. Captain Stewart accepted responsibility for the accident, but appealed the decision to ground him, making the point that his first officer did not turn on the aircraft landing lights when asked to, and may, in fact, have mistakenly adjusted the flaps, resulting in the nose pitching suddenly upwards and the aircraft stalling. The appeal was unsuccessful. There was one peculiar postscript to the accident. The Stratocruiser had, amongst its cargo, 40 bags of rough diamonds, worth around £1 million at the time. After an extensive search, it was estimated all but 10% had been retrieved. 
In the end, the crash of Gialsa was the result of a combination of factors. It was a sad end to a great career for Captain Stewart, who among other achievements was the first British pilot to perform 100 crossings of the Atlantic. Of the passengers on board, 21 of the 25 were due to leave the flight at Presswick, along with all 11 crew members who were due to be replaced. The 1954 Stratocruiser accident was the second major disaster to occur at Presswick in the post-war years, following the crash of a KLM Lockheed Constellation on approach in October 1948.